you've both obviously mentioned the relationship with the one team, the sister team, the A team, however you want to describe that relationship with Red Bull and now Visa Cash App RB. By the way, we will do our best not to refer to it as AlphaTari here on Unlapped. We are professionals, but in the event that we do during the season, just know that AlphaTari, Visa Cash App RB are interchangeable at this point for the three of us. <laughs> but given that relationship between the two, McLaren's Zach Brown has some issues with it. And a recent comment made some headlines. And I think it's interesting. And I, I want to discuss it with the two of you. The exact quote was from Brown. We have some work to do around the rules. I think the AB team is a real problem moving forward. I think co-ownership, you don't really have that in any other sport. And I think that provides a lot of conflict of interest. I think anytime you have an entity that owns two teams or an A and B relationship, I think it really starts to compromise the integrity of sporting fairness. That's the comment from Zach Brown. Lawrence, I'd be curious if you think these comments from Brown are are fair. Well, this relationship as in Red Bull owning the two teams has existed since 2006. So it's not that new. I think what has changed is that um, there's going to be a close relationship between those two teams moving forward. Um, and that includes uh, the design office, a lot of the people that work for Visa Cash App, RB, Alpha Tauri, um, who were previously based in Bista, a separate facility, moving onto the Red Bull campus. And then they've also been using the Red Bull wind tunnel since I think 2022. Uh, so there's kind of just this slow integration. I think a few people who were previously based in Italy are likely to now set up in the UK. And um, Peter Bayer, the, um, the CEO at, at Visa Cash App, RB, uh, has been quite clear on the reasons for that. Uh, one, is that you know that they, they, they want to have people all together in one place, but also to attract engineers from other team. It was always quite difficult to attract people to go to Faenza in Italy, where that team is based, uh, because it's um, away from the majority of of other Formula One teams. Okay, you've got Ferrari just down the road, but Ferrari always has more of a draw than uh, than the Toro Rosso, Alfa Tauri, Visa, Cash App, RB team. Um, but being in the UK, you all of a sudden have all those other teams there and you can start to draw in uh, more expertise. And, and, and that's what they want to do going forward. Now, I think the concern among uh, some of the other teams, really vocally, I've only heard it from Zach Brown, but uh, it's certainly been discussed, um, uh, I think, within F1 commission meetings. Uh, the FIA have also said they're aware of it, is that you know if you have these two teams operating out of the same place, there may start to be a few kind of shared uh, bits of intellectual property. Now, that is absolutely against the rules when it comes to aero surfaces, which is where the big concern is. You are allowed to use certain parts or basically buy certain parts from another team. So um, Alpha Towery, Visa Cash App RB will be using um, the rear suspension from uh, last year's Red Bull this year and the front suspension, I think, from this year's Red Bull this year so um you know th there's a few things which are allowed to do under the regulations but then to have all of that integrated and also perhaps if some of those engineers are being attracted to go uh, to the junior red bull team are they really going there to work for the junior red bull team or, or do they have their sights set on them moving into the senior red bull team you know and having those two teams so closely linked and then having the design offices on the same in, in the same area, it, it does it does raise some concerns. But the FIA were quite clear about this at the end of last year. Uh, Nicholas Tombatsi talked about it. He said, look, they're aware of it. They're not aware of anything that the two teams have done incorrectly so far. Um, but it's something that they were going to introduce just a few more guidelines on going into the winter and something that they would monitor very carefully. But um, yeah, until there's proof that intellectual property has moved in terms of, you know, aero stuff has moved from one side to the other, um, you know, you can be concerned about it, but I don't think you can get, you know, that that angry about it. But yeah, clearly, uh, it's something that Zach is particularly keen to to push, and whether that's to try and destabilize uh, Red Bull a bit, or whether he sees Visa Cash App RB in its new form with, you know, a lot more, a bit more investment going in, and and uh, you know, more, more links to that Red Bull team, whether he sees them as a threat, maybe that's it as well. I love that he's already twisting the knife and we haven't even gotten into winter testing. And I never thought that I would hear myself say this. Lawrence, Visa Cash App RB rolls off the tongue when you say it. <laughs> Every time I said it, it, it. picked in the gut, though. Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's horrible to hear. <laughs> but yeah, shaking Lawrence your head is, over there, Nate. Lawrence, it feels like Lawrence has been saying it for years. I'm still trying to. It does. No, it's tough. Out. It's tough. Um, and I keep 
not knowing. I keep wanting to say Alpha Tauri and then having to say the both. And I don't know. Yeah, it's um, it's tough. Well, we'll get used to it. But anyway. Yeah. Nate, and that, you're you're yeah. close with McLaren. You're close with Zach Brown. What did you think? Yeah, I think um, it's interesting that Zach's been the only one who's spoken out about this so far. Um, we haven't mm-hmm. really had a chance, I guess, to, to put it to Toto, put it to Ferrari properly. Um, but James Allison did talk about it recently, and he um, he didn't he didn't really go out on a limb. Where when I, there was, a, I think he spoke to uh, John Noble from Motorsport, um, and from what I remember, and I'm now <laughs> scrabbling to remember what the article said, but he didn't massively go out on a limb like Zach Brown did. Maybe that's something reserved for Toto Wolf. I don't know. Um, but obviously, Zach was very outspoken. In 2022, when we had the whole cost cap saga, he actually wrote an open letter about Red Bull. So he's really had a he's really had this kind of nagging suspicion, I guess, around Red Bull's operations about the cost cap. And a lot of what he said was was kind of laced to that. And and Lawrence laid it out really, really well. I mean, it is interesting. It's the only it's the only kind of relationship like that that exists. I know that Ferrari and Haas have have a have a relationship that's close and that has been under the microscope before. But as we as we keep coming back to, Red Bull owns both of these teams. So I actually mm-hmm. think that where this will be really kind of I think that this is going to become a sticky issue all season. We saw last year the FIA and to be fair, the FIA did an incredible job in terms of the due diligence due diligence of the cost cap investigation this most recent go round. But they were looking into WhatsApp messages, they were looking into emails. Can you imagine what they're going to have to start doing if if there is suspicions of of this, or even even if Red Bull want to say, "Well, look, we're not doing anything wrong," you don't you don't just uncover that or look into that overnight. That you know that that's it's a serious charge, and you think that to to actually look at that properly would take would take forever. So, yeah, hard to see what the next the next step is. Whether Brown is you know I, I heard a suggestion that Brown was maybe more upset he didn't get visa to join with McLaren, which was a little bit cheeky. But you you actually look at what Brown's done at McLaren, and he has attracted a lot of big name sponsors. So you know, Visa would have been another one, another one there. And I have heard from other places he was courting Visa for a few years. I don't think it would have been. I don't think that would have been that petty. And in in his defence, my immediate thought was, well, he was saying that towards the end of last year, you know, and the Visa thing was obviously in negotiations. He probably had heard about it, but wasn't confirmed mm-hmm. it was going to be that. So, but that just shows you some of the some of the kind of the back and forth you hear behind the scenes about these things. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's given us a really good talking point for Bahrain and for the first few races, because I think it's unlikely we'll see team Ricardo, whatever we're going to, I'm going to call it team Ricardo for, you know, until, until, (laughs) until, until, until a a better time, Uh, until Red Bull's second team. Um, if, if they, if they do an Aston Martin this year, I think it was very unlikely given where Alpha Tauri was at the end of last season. But if Mm -hmm. that team starts really overperforming from last season, Suddenly, that question is going to be big, isn't it? Is oh well, it must just be because of this this closer, more integral relationship. And to go to to go to the Ricardo point, we talked about it a lot last season, and a lot of fans, when they've you know they've replied to tweets or I've seen you know in 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 other places, have asked comments to different articles. They've said, well, why wouldn't Red Bull promote Ricardo to promote? Uh, to, sorry, in place of Perez, this is exactly why. You know, they wanted a big name driver to lead this new team uh, or this newly named team. And if you're Visa, you're coming in, and we talked about this. W- will this blow over? I think it will, and very, very quickly, they can lean on a personality like Ricardo. I think that they can have a lot of fun with the fact that everyone hates the name. I think that you've got a guy in there, and and Yuki as well. I think just not caring. I imagine sure. would be the kind of the vibe. I think they've got two great drivers to deal with that situation, if that makes sense, in terms of the media. And we haven't yeah. really seen them yet. So once we're into the season, I think that those two guys will actually be really key in kind of just change because it's hard to dislike those two guys. And I think that that's really going to help the team out because people are going to say, oh, the team sucks, but still really like the drivers. So I think that keeping those, keeping Ricardo in, you know, and, and they're hoping they get the old, you know, R- Ricardo with the full season under his belt as good again um, as he was a few years back. Um, so I think that will eventually subside. Um, but yeah, sorry, that was a long way around from what you asked about. Uh, no, but about- I think it's a good point. Um, I think you you lean into it if you're Visa, Cash, App, RB, and your two drivers. See, I that th- didn't roll quite off the tongue, but I got there. Yeah, we need to. We need whatever Lawrence has been drinking before this. We need some of it. Um, just I on know, that I just name, need a, I think uh, is in- a note card at the top of my computer. <laughs> always. Yeah. It's just you're it. just saying it on repeat before we started recording. Yeah. Um, just on that though, as well, I think it's very interesting that. I think Formula One, you can see it, and I know, and and later, I know we're going to talk about the new uh, Madrid race, but Formula One is mm-hmm. actually very good at at kind of 
slowly moving the goalposts without people really realizing it. You know, we've gone from, and we can talk about this a bit more, like how things have, we've gone from 18 to 24 races, et cetera. But it feels like this, if we, if we suddenly get used to this by the end of the year, Lawrence is right. Like when this deal ends, it might seem a lot more natural. Be like, oh yeah, yeah, some random companies come in now and has has taken over. You know, there's other teams that might be the case for. Um, and one of our colleagues we were talking to the other day mentioned that in cycling, it's all like this. You know, you have Team Sky. When Lance Armstrong was in Asterix winning the Tour de France, all those times it was with the U.S. Postal Service team, I think. So it yes. was there wasn't really a it wasn't a name. It was a brand behind that team name. So. Kind of interesting to see that. And I don't think Formula will ever get that bad because we have big manufacturers with iconic names in there. But you do wonder, you know, this kind of, I, I feel like things like this always kind of start to cascade a little bit. Um, yeah. So I'm interested to see in 10 years where, you know, what the value of a team name is versus, you know, a, a title sponsorship like a like a Petronas or a, a Ramco uh, or, a, you know, Cognizant or as we've seen with other teams before versus we're now rechanging the whole team name of this team kit, everything, logo, et cetera. Um, who knows? Maybe it's maybe this is the beginning of the end of the of the traditional uh the tr traditional name. Hope it's not, but I always wonder about stuff like that. Like, is this is yeah. this just where things are going now? Because you look at other sports and it's also happening there as well. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN Plus.